Hi, test, testing, testing. One, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Hi everyone, welcome to the online book launch of Love and Life at the Gallery, an anthology of poems based on the artworks from the National Gallery Singapore. My name is Lilin and it's a pleasure for me to be here. Today we'll be having a Q&A with our editors, Waikit and Genevieve, as well as readings by our contributing poets. So I have, with here, uh, I have here with me the two editors behind this book, O Yang Waikit and Genevieve Wong. Waikit is a teacher and writer who has edited three poetry anthologies. He holds an MA from the University College London and he has served as a judge of the National Poetry Competition organized by Poetry Festival Singapore. In 2019, he was a recipient of the Outstanding Youth in Education Award by the Ministry of Education. On the far right is Genevieve who is a teacher, writer, editor, and museum docent. She has an MFA in creative writing and an MAD in curriculum, teaching, and learning. She has also co-edited 50 Years, 50 Voices, 50 Years of English in Singapore Schools, and the poetry anthology Sound of Mind. Now, why Kit and Jen, let's start with this question. Why bring art and poetry together? Uh, perhaps I'll just start off. Um... I think what we wanted to do was to show that there's a really close connection between art and poetry, right? And that we have a real tradition of drastic poetry, which at its most basic level is, of course, poetry about art, right? Uh, right here in Singapore and in all our national languages. So that's something we really wanted to bring across. Um, and the thing, of course, is that now at a time like this, right, the fact that we are even going online, um, it, it's, it's almost as if in, in times like a, a pandemic, sometimes said that poetry and art are seen as luxuries, right? But on the contrary, it's almost that as if we've seen ever clearer than ever before that poetry and art are more essential. I mean, it, it shows what it means to be human. And that's something we really wanted to bring across here. Um, it, it, we are reminded, of course, uh, so, so we, like there's a, a quote that we were really inspired by when Prof Tambu was, was uh, sharing with us, right, that um, in a way, we need to treasure these everyday miracles. You know, that when we're saying that, uh, you know, these poems offer us a timely reminder of the miracle of being alive and what what times these are that we can truly commemorate. Right. So it's the best time, in fact, that we are showcasing these poems. You know, um, of course, to Singapore, but by extension to the world. You know, online right now. Thank you, Waikid. And I, I guess like what you said about everyday miracles also reminds us that often we take miracles uh, for granted, especially those that seem uh, commonplace or the uh, ordinary. And since uh, you have reminded us that we live in uh, extraordinary times now, um, can you just offer us some insight into what are some of the differences between the 2017 anthology and this uh, current one that you have just uh, edited? I have, I have with me the 2017 anthology, and I think uh, people who have seen it, uh, comparing, comparing that to, to our current book, um, they can see a world of difference. So, <laughs> so I'm glad we have uh, improved, and, and, um, and, and the improvement really came about because we had two events uh, from, from that time until now. Uh, we had Love at the Gallery 2, and we also had uh, Love and Life at the Gallery. Uh, those two in events um, had this interplay with art, with uh, uh, poems, with music and dance. And I, I, I keep saying the same thing, that it's really one, one, of, one of my, my biggest regrets, that we can't 
uh, showcase the music and the dance part of, of the collaboration uh, uh, in, in print form. Yeah, so, um, but, but what we have done and what Waikit will, will talk about in a while is that we have added uh, color, color uh, reproduction um, of the paintings in this book because we felt it was important for readers to really see what the writers were, were, were looking at as, as, as they were inspired uh, to write. We wanted people to, to be immersed in the experience. And I, and I think um, that really added to the, to the experience of just holding this book and looking at all these like, wonderful, uh, let me just open it, wonderful uh, artwork, artworks inside. Yeah, um, Waikit will tell you uh, more about the challenges that that had. Yeah, so um, yeah, Waikit. Um, I, I to tell what, what Jen said, because we felt that, of course, there were challenges involved in uh, you know, producing full color illustrations of artworks in a publication like this. And this isn't common. And at times like these now, of course, right? I mean, you, there are many arts groups which are trying to uh, go economical as, as far as possible. I mean, we're trying to cut costs, right? But we felt it was really important to showcase these artworks in their full glory. Because uh, after all, if we look at the collection of the National Gallery in Singapore, right? I mean, we've got plenty of these masterpieces that have often been overlooked. I mean, even as, as a teacher, when I've brought students to the National Gallery, right? Uh, there are so many of these works that they've never set eyes on. Some of them might never even have stepped into the National Gallery of Singapore. So it's high time that we showcase many of these works, right? And if we were to just, uh, just, just uh, not include these works or just feature them in black and white, it just wouldn't do justice to, 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 to them. Um, another thing that, uh, of course, we wanted to showcase was um, we wanted to bring people to, to offer that kind of immersive experience. So this is a, a book that you can really uh, take almost as a kind of guide. Right, that you imagine if you held the book and you went to uh, each of uh, each of these works. Right? I mean, we're just showcasing some of some of the pictures. And this is just the tip of the iceberg as far as um, these works are concerned. You know, there are, there's so many of these masterpieces, like for example, Bosch Brand by Rami Saleh, right? and we've got uh, wonderful poems in the anthology about about works like these, right? Uh, historical works and also works in, from more recent times. You know, we've got of course very classic epic uh, poem of Malaya right? uh, by Petramia T. And uh, we've got different, different writers writing about the same artwork, sometimes even in different languages, which we felt really offers a kind of multiplicity and diversity of perspectives, which we really need. Right? And speaking of diversity, that's another aspect of it. Right? That, you know, so this is a very unique book, uh, I guess. I guess and any anyone around the world who who pick who picks up this book will be just amazed at the and not only the paintings but also the the languages that that, that we've really made an effort to, to represent. I think it's something unique to poetry festival Singapore, something unique to Singapore as well. Um, we um, one of the one of our, our poets uh, Anne said on Facebook actually that that actually technically you could take this book go to the National Gallery. Uh, walk around and it could be a poetic tour of the National Gallery. And in addition to that, we also have uh, audio readings. Uh, we, we got all the poets, yes. uh, we invited all the poets who are not present with us today uh, to read and, and we, uh, we've uploaded all their readings uh, on a YouTube page, on a YouTube site. So it's a playlist. So technically it could be a very, very rich afternoon listening to the poets read. Um, their own poems, looking at the paintings in the gallery, wandering around, and, and just really immersing yourself in the whole experience. Um, and uh, it's not just, of course, uh, this year, right? I mean, I, mean, I think yeah. due credit uh, is really important to, to showcase uh, the poets from, from this batch, the latest ones that we've got, and they're all here on YouTube. So in a way, it's, it's, poetry, of course, isn't meant to be just read on the page. It's also meant to be listened to, and that's why we invited all poets to... to uh, well, record themselves and put themselves on on uh, in, you know, on, on, on YouTube and, and, and so on. So I think it's really allowing for that kind of experience and also just pointing out that we've got uh, the earlier batch as well you know, of, of poetry readings featured on YouTube as well from the 2017 version. So that's uh, that's also there. Yeah. It sounds like you have come quite a long way from the 2017 um, experience, and that's great. Um, can I just ask for the artwork on the cover, uh, what made you decide to choose this uh, particular piece of art that you have featured on the cover? 
so uh, we had long discussions about what the artwork on the cover should be, right? But one thing we were clear about was that we wanted to honor our Singapore artists. That was for sure, right? That, uh, and especially schools like the Nanyang School, for instance. Yeah? So th this is an artwork, um, the estuary, uh, created in around um, 1970 by mm. uh, the artist Lim Sheng Ho. And he's created many wonderful works, all of which you can uh, see for yourself at the, at the gallery, the National Gallery. And the, the thing, interesting thing, of course, about an artwork like this is that uh, on the one hand, it's a perfect illustration of the of, of Singapore art. But um, secondly, there's also the atmosphere. There's a, a certain kind of ethereal, dreamy, you know, atmospheric kind of quality. And we wanted to represent that. We wanted to show that, in a way, that's how we're living right now, right? We are also living as through a glass darkly in, in many senses. So we wanted to convey a bit of that sense, yeah, illustrated literally through watercolors here, but also in a kind of metaphorical sense of how uh, we, are, we are living in very uncertain times. Mm -hmm. But and yet, it's art and poetry that can really illustrate what it means to be human right here, right now. Wow, okay. So that's a very interesting um, explanation of why you chose the cover. And I'm sure the uh, readers and um, will appreciate this uh, fact. Yeah. So uh, tell us more about uh, what are the early reviews of the book like? Okay, um, I think we've, we're quite uh, blessed to, to have received some initial responses. Yeah. <laughs> When we were, we were showing, oh, right, just before that, a uh, shout out, of course, to our contributing poets. So some of you might be watching online right now. Really appreciate your contribution, and in in a way, all your works help to showcase the the, the magnificence of Singapore art and of Southeast Asian art in general. So all, all of you poets, uh, who are just who are featured here, uh, just a shout out to to you, uh, and. Just in terms of some reviews, we are, we are very grateful to have had the support of fellow poets. I think uh, fellow poets in Singapore have been very <laughs> encouraging. So of course we've got uh, Desmond. He was just here yesterday as well. Des Desmond Khan, right? He was featured in another one of our poetry festival events. Uh, and uh, when when uh, he, he was commenting on the diversity of the works as well, right? It was just like Desmond, right? And um, when he was in, of course uh, Aaron. So Aaron Lee, when was commenting about how uh, the viewing experience is something special as well. And it's not just, of course, our poets. I think we really need to bring more, uh, more people into the conversation like that. And so a lot more stakeholders, right? So if we look at uh, definitely how can we forget the National Gallery Singapore them themselves. So very grateful for the support of the National Gallery Singapore. Yeah. Uh, likewise, Thought Collective. So I, I think we need to bring uh, more perspectives into the picture, and the more we support we can get for art, for poetry, the better. So really appreciate that. Uh, and likewise, uh, for Arts Equator, and, I mean, we, let's, let's bring you know, our arts yeah. leaders yes, into the conversation as well. Right? Uh, LaSalle, right? and so I, I think uh, Previously, we also had correspondence with Mr. Venka right here. So. Yeah, we, we um so so for the event, we had uh, quite deep collaboration with Vassel for the for the musicians and the, and the dancers as well. Yeah, so I think basically this is all bragging about how good the book is. <laughs> so please please buy more copies for yourself, for your friends, for your family. Yeah, so um yeah yeah buy it buy it. <laughs> So uh, later we will have, have a link to uh, let you know how you can purchase um, the multiple copies of the book <laughs> that uh, Jen was talking about. But um, right now, we would like to have the eight poets we have with us today to read their poems from the anthology. And their poems will offer us a glimpse into the richness and diversity of the works that are showcased in the anthology. Our first reader is... So thank, um, you. thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Our first reader is uh, Professor Edwin Thambu. Prof Thambu was Emeritus Professor and Professorial Fellow, Department of English Language and Literature, National University of Singapore. He was Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences for 11 years from July 1980. Among the significant developments during his tenure was the introduction of majors in Chinese language, English language, Japanese studies, Linguistics, European Studies, Mass Communications, and Psychology. 
He was the first cultural Mendelian winner, winner in 1980 and also received the ASEAN Cultural and Communication Award in Literature in 1987. Today, Prof will be reading for us a poem based on his, this artwork by Mon Tien Boon Ma entitled The Pleasure of Being, Crying, Dying and Eating. Prof Sambu, please. Check one testing. Giant sorrow. Start from the beginning or where I stop? Start from the beginning, is it? Oh, this is very close. <laughs> My poem is called Ayatana. I wrote it for Lean and Ma. This path begins within our senses. Alert, curious, humanitative, the Ghana worlds, yours and mine, reality to dream, holding all into that overarching six. It sorts our journeys, tabulates, grades, essentializes, reveals, pegs and instructs. It reads frayed shadows beneath a rose, the auguries patient in a heron's voice, the ways of self and world. She minds us to meditate cyclic amplitude of birth, growth, appetite, death. Joy and sorrow, love and loss, 
prime and prune till we see light blow radiant be grass white pink and red lotuses a purity devotion the rise to heaven those who grew adept under bow and banyan gave mantra formed deep prayers touch others om mani padme hum in hermitage and void deck beads and keypad chant shape doctrine philosophy road and image and maps insert sign post this one read the pleasure of being crying dying and eating basic universal montian's art generates new currents circulating diving between sagacious signifiers and signified strip bear invent symbols in familiar colors pad ignoring almanacs of customs and tradition to shock and shake by blunt subtlety top sticks a brown finger bones sides of bowls a beige low jaws fired into them then laid smartly on red cloth table reproportioned post dying fragment grace saputangans ready fingers ready for diners a top bowl tower a yard of pink intestine gleams with mucus a final counterpoint compacted decay and auspiciousness spread places to alternate the impact without limit we share bone sinew and flesh we sg malayu china kling thrani demolish shit curry share the pledge celebrate each other's festival we keep ancestry identity major and minor feeling above all each our faith belief words of divinity they move our senses all six to cope with the ebb and flow mulling the swirling apology of the world for me the beatitudes his gift of bread and wine at the last supper thank you so much prof for that lovely uh, reading of your poem Okay, thank you, Prof. So next we have Dr. Oliver Seat. Dr. Oliver Seat received his early education at Raffles Institution. He went on to study at the University of Malaya in Singapore, Wellington University in New Zealand, and Essex University in the UK. He obtained a PhD from NUS, where he did his doctoral studies in applied linguistics. Dr. Seat published his collection of poems entitled Once. in 2019 Dr Seed will be reading for us two poems today the first is inspired by Chua Mia Tee's painting and the second is inspired by the artwork by Montien Bunma that prof uh, prof Tambu referenced earlier Dr Seed please Good afternoon can you hear me Good afternoon The first poem is a response to Tuamiati's great painting entitled Epic Poem of Malaya and this was written in 1955 under somber skies backed with a glow of queen in blue with holding tightly clouds parturient with rain they sat and raptured students from a high school 
glossy-eyed with utopian visions of equality, parity, freedom and liberty, of welfare and dignity for the common man, of equal distribution of wealth. Spurred on by the village orator, charged with eloquent words, filled with portentous coal fire and brimstone, painting a world made new by revolution, and setting aside all fear of authority to carve out a new age imbued with purity, honesty, and total lack of corruption. My second poem is based on uh, the same that installation by Martin Bunma that Professor Sambu responded to. This is my response to it. A porringer of rice, flowers, and incense. Arms for mendicants in saffron robes. Bent on severing soul binding ties and desire that interlock all beings in the wheel of karma are reverent offerings of appeasement. For the common man, life sustaining food in porcelain bowls, downturned each night, are measures of days circumambulating endlessly upward for those desiring supremacy to merit and give it, or spiraling downwards to degradation into lower states of being in an interminable chain of reincarnation from the first cry of rebirth to the last splutter of death. But those on the eightfold path must seek in viharas in a still temple of the mind, the obsessive light by the nerve loud river of life that will reveal the unremitting chain of being, storing their soul ephemerally in earthen vessels, stacked in circles of death. Only through complete detachment can they find release in the nirvana of non being. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Seed. Next, we have Mr. Robert Yeo's poem on Chua Mia Ki's epic poem of Malaya. Mr. Yeo is 80 this year. He has published continuously since his first book of poems, Coming Home Baby, in 1971. Also, he has staged plays beginning in 1974 with Are You There, Singapore? As well, he has published a novel, written several essays, a memoir, as well as librettos for opera. He was awarded a Public Service Medal in 1991 and won the SE Asian Write Award in 2011. His latest books are The Best of Robert Yeo, 2012, his collected poems and a play, The Eye of History, 2016. Mr. Yeo will be sharing with us his poem on Epic Poem of Malaya. Mr. Yeo, please. poem is my interpretation of the iconic painting by Chuan Miyaki for epic poem of Malaya. The master is reality, the mistress is beauty. People are the apprehensive audience. He carries a weight book, but this is not the little weight book that mesmerized the sick man. Though Mao must have stung the students at Chongqing High School, he has 
point of sickness. But here in Singapore, miles away, it was not just the rate that rankled, but what could signify to erase the dominant white. Red was the Chinese color. But the artist did not intend it that way, as he told me. The young man held the epic poem of Malaya in his left hand, and the people on his right. The people are his boys and girls, and his men and women. He wears the singlet of simplicity, and they the white of purity. He stands, they sit or squat on low wooden benches. His voice is raised, and they listen, rapt, and comforted. They are on the beach in Changi or Pasir Ris. It does not matter which, as long as they can hear the sea and what it represents. Wave after wave after wave, like his message. Our time has come, like the inevitable ceaseless waves, but there is a storm brewing and we must prepare for it. We must endure darkness and rain before we even begin to see the sliver of light. Reality is the cliché from which we escape by metaphor. The metaphor is imagination, and the artist knows how the mundane can inspire. The cup on the floor, the peanut skin strewn beside it, the OP wrap, the ignored fly on his left shoulder, bottom right. This is his reality, the people's reality. He does not want beauty and his truth above the photographic eye. The people are now his appreciative audience. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Yo. The next poet we have with us Hi, I'm DC author Cheng. Uh, I'll stand and read. Um, the artwork uh, that I was tasked to give a poetic response is Kim Lim's step. Uh, can I show? Yeah, this is the artwork. Uh, this artwork is just made up of um, three metal half curved with escalating height. So um, the other poets actually choose other artworks. So this is quite challenging. Um, I found that actually Kim Slim work um, has uh, to try to go back to the basic forms of shapes. So uh, in this book, uh, I have three short poems. So uh, one of them uh, I'm going to read to you is one that I use, Shi uh, Jing, that's one of the most classical style. Um, the title um, is written in Chinese, simultaneously uh, translated into English. Now, the title is Three Phases of a Love Journey, or Duan, 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 Broken, Broken, Broken. Three Phases of a Love Journey. Nam Yu Q. Nanyo Duan Chiao, Broken Bridge in the South. Fu Ke Xiu Xi, Bu Ke Xiu Si, The Unstoppable Longings That Never Cease Like a Vow. 
Buzz Go Bei Yo Gao Mu Big Tree Lot in the North Sui Yu Shi Si Sui Yu Shi Si Where the flowing river being lost deep in search Gracefully the leaf like boat floats a journey it flows to with pauses and stops. Pian Pian Lan Zhou, Tie Hang Tie Zhu. Green water greens, blue your shirt blue. Lu Shui Yo Yo, Qing Qing Zi Jing. The second phase. Shen Zhi Tuo Fu, Wei Zhu Wei Zhui. The one I search for and pursue is where the body finds homes to. Xin you du zhong, you xin chong chong. The person who my heart holds on to is where the heart will be conquered by wolves. The last phase. High rising the noon blazing sun, ru ri zhong pian. Reaching you by climbing a ladder, of cloudy smoke, Pi Zuo Yun Yan. Till dawn of the dawn in diminishing rays, Shi Wei, Shi Wei. Who else but me? Nobody but you. She Wo Qi Shui. Thank you. Thank you so much, Big Sing. Up next is a poem by Suba Santu Kuma. Suba has been living in Singapore since um the last twelve years. She has been writing poems for the last five years. She has received the Golden Point Award second prize in 2015 and the first prize in 2019 for her Tamil poems. Her poems were published in Singapore and Tamil Nadu-based magazines and poetry collections. Her first poetry collection was released recently in Singapore and Tamil Nadu. Suba will be reading her poem that was inspired by this painting, Forest Fire, by Radin Sala. Suba, please. Good evening, everybody. When I first saw the painting, what immediately flashed into my mind was Darwin's survival of the fittest theory. Nature has truly written its rules as such. The forces of creation and destruction are the basis of, the, of these rules. At first glance, this painting seems to show the mighty power of the force of destruction. However, the true message of the painting is not destruction, but the balance between creation and destruction. What is created is destroyed, and whether destruction occurs, creation does too. One cannot be without the other, just like the concept of karma, yin and yang. This is what the painting is truly impressing on us, and it's what is presented in my poem. Here is my poem. First, I'm reading my poem in my mother tongue, Tamil. Maranam Varangum Varam. Sitrudal Pasiyara Eritunum Unova Changilil, Aditalin Urasal Kalil, Todangradu, Padaipin, Sirupuri. Anaitayum Tanil Vari Anaitu Pudeti Kola Kulaikal Tavi Varkradu Maranam Varangum Varam Pudaitalin Banmamum Irthalin Betkayum Irayadalin Niramum Kuraitu Thai Nilamengum Uruhi Vadikradu Sivapum Marai Arupatta Mehangalin Badie Vaneri Karekradu Uirhalin Iram Sirakal Identa Marangalai Vitu Vadirikindrana Paravai Kodukal Pasikum Bayatir Kumana, Padangodakal Kurka Patu, Kidipata Kurthukulukum, Bayadana Nakangalukum, Padanga Padakradu, Buddhari Adi the Paichalil, Sama Nilai Kulindadil, Puram Talapata, Padutta Navutudika, Anal Mucha Adangakradu, Tinda Tahadati Balianavum, Melianavum, Kundru Kuvika Pata, a Pal Nilatil, Pay the Matra Udarkaritinum, Kadikin Pasiai. Tarai Rangradu, Iraparia, Peruvanatin, Uir. Next, my poem in English, Forest Fire. 
to satiate the hunger of flesh the burning food chain with the moments of destruction starts the spark of creation the death giving tree comes as branches to embrace everything to itself the violence of survival the desire of existence and the color of becoming prey all meld into red rain falling on mother earth the substance of life rises and dissolves in the sky climbing unfettered clouds birds nest abandoned trees that have lost their feathers liberation comes to slice up necks and old claws lunging forward in great haste untouchable fire losing its balance ripe tongue stretched out stills its no, hot breath the deathless spirit of the great forest descends on the waste land filled with the strong and the weak like a vulture making no distinction between flesh and flesh thank you thank you so much suba and next up we have with us sorry the next poem is actually written by farida taib farida has been working as a clerical officer at nie since 1982 she is a mother and wife and she has two daughters aged 28 and 30 she has contributed several poems to various books and newspapers and she was a winner of the literary award anugera kaswatan prithi um isaran in 2017 Unfortunately, Farida cannot make it for today's reading, so her poem will be read by Aziza. Aziza is an arts um educator and manager with a background in stage and TV productions, as well as various print publications. Currently a full-time educator, Aziza is also a member of Poetry Festival Singapore and the Malay Language Council. Aziza, please. Wahai layar Pelayaran cinta Wahai sang pelayar berdayung Dalam pelayaran cinta menentang angin melumpuhkan badai walau muatan di dalamnya berbagai kisah lara Segarkan keyakinan untuk sampai ke pelabuhan mengusung mimpi dan harapan dalam melaksan pengembaraan Adakala cuaca bening sebening embun es Adakala cuaca kelabu sekelabu tsunami membelah lautan lalu menyimpan mengamati ganasnya ombak yang menggegarkan dan karang yang mengganggu bila langit menggulung mendung bumi disiram dengan kisah sama bergoncang lagi di tengah samudra tapi cinta mengatasi segalanya agar layar bahteranya kian berarah bersama cintanya jauh ke merata pelusuk penjuru bila ditemani kejayaan bersiap siaga melepasi gelombang apa masa berlayar mengalir ikuti alur air walau seperti kehilangan setengah nyawa masih mampu mengawal kemudi di tangan sang dalang sepasang aji seiring boneka cintanya dalam Love voyage. Dear sailor, pedal away on this love voyage, fighting against the wind, fitting the storm despite 
the heavy battle, filled with bitter sweet tales. So bring us your will to reach the harbour, ushering hopes and dreams in this exhausting odyssey. At times, the day is clear as morning dew, sometimes as grey as the tsunami, splitting the sea, harbouring grief, witnessing vicious waves, wavering in the impeding coral. As dark clouds loom ahead and the earth is drenched with sand. Shudders in the middle of the ocean, but love conquers all and may the ship sail well. With his love deep into every nook and corner, accompanied by triumphs, all geared to save the storm and the ship sailed on. Flowing with the current, so it feels like half the soul's gone. The rudder is still under control and the hands of the master man, along with his love puppet and voyage. Thank you. Thank you, Aziza. And our next poet is Mr. Yong Shu Hong. Mr. Yong has authored six poetry collections, including Frottage, 2005, and The Viewing Party, 2013, both of which won the Singapore Literature Prize and the latest, Right of the Soil, 2018. He is one of four co-authors of The Adopted, Stories from Angkor, 2015, and Lost Bodies, Poems Between Portugal and Home, 2016. Mr. Yong will be reading his poem based on this artwork, Exotic 101 by Michael Shoanasai. Mr. Yong, please. Hi. I remember when I was first commissioned for this project, a lot of the artworks have already been taken up by, by the other poets. And I ended up with um, this particular artwork, which consists of one uh, pole on a platform. And it's actually a very interesting artwork called um, Exotic 101. And the first thing that I thought of was actually this particular song that I heard way back in the 80s called This Is Not A Love Song uh, by a post-punk band uh, called Public Image Limited. So in fact, I actually took the last line of my poem based upon um, the song lyric, uh, which was taken from the song lyric of that particular song. So this one is called Pole Position. This is not a love song. Uh, this is not a love poem. For there is nothing at all romantic or favorable about a singular pole erect on a dark platform, even if that circular space is blazed with diodes to shine the way. I'm imagining Public Image Limited's This Is Not A Love Song resounding through the atmosphere. Would it grant me the required divination and for what? write the corneous lines tonight? Oh, if I should be so fortunate as to wallow in bad cliches that I could use to assemble into a silly ode. Is it more tragic for a poet to be in love with no one than with everyone? This is not a love poem. Even when the pole impales one's heart in its rightful place, or when a naked body writes around it like serpentine coil. Slippery upon its metal surface is not the marinade of a spit rose or oil for worship, but dewdrops of enterprise that trickle into the black cesspool below, simmering the strange and deranged tale of lust made flesh, 
poles apart, still from the love yet to find its name. This is not a love poem. This is also not an anti-love poem. This is not about love, or this is nothing but a love poem. Who's to say this really is not a love poem? I'm happy to have, not to have not. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yong. And uh, last but not least, we have Mr. Theophilus Quack. Theophilus has published four collections of poetry, two of which were shortlisted for the Singapore Literature Prize. His poems, essays, and translations have appeared in The Guardian, Times Literary Supplement, The London Magazine, Mekong Review, among other publications. He has also written and researched on issues of migration and citizenship, and volunteers with NGOs supporting migrant communities in Singapore. His most recent collection, Moving House, is published by Kakanet Press in the UK. Theophilus's poem today is based on this work of art, War and Peace, by Hendra Gunawan. Theophilus, please. Hi. So behind me is this painting by Hendra Gunawan, um, and it shows two guerrilla fighters uh, who were forced to flee from the city during the, um, the unrest in Indonesia in the 1950s and 60s. My poem that I'm going to read today, Gunung, and that's of course a word for mountain, um, is in two halves, and the first half is based in 1965, and the second half is based in 2015. 1965. My love has built a house among the mountains. The mountains are a shadow for my love. He has named every tree upon the mountain. No mountain is a mountain for my love. Who has seen his shadow on the mountain? The women in the village speak of my love in low voices. They tell me that their husbands have glimpsed the erring shadow of my love. In truth, they know no more than the mountains. Ask them, you will learn nothing of my love. They say that he who lives among the mountains must sleep without the shadow of his love. But my shadow falls across our hidden places, and a mountain sleeps within the house of love. One day he will leave the shadowed mountain. One day he will build our common house. Till then, my love will sleep among the mountains. A far and trembling mountain is my love. 2015. This will be my eighth year in this country. Three years in my first house, four in this one, where I am treated well, sometimes like a nurse, for there are two children, sometimes also like a daughter. My own are still at school. And as my husband, who works long hours in Bandung, tells me, are happy there, each content with her sister company, and obedient, or at least keeps to herself. I call home these days, less than in those first exacting years, find equal joy in walking up the slope to where the girls wait for their bus, a hill which, I've learned, till now remembered, a boy who drove branches thick as his arms into the earth to save his village, but could not save himself, from a king who knew nothing of love but as a threat, and so was killed. Here he comes. The mountain breeze is in. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tophilus. And thank you to all our poets who have joined us for this reading today. All the poems that you have heard today are from this book. And please support P uh, Poetry Festival Singapore and all poets by buying a copy. So you can purchase copies at lovelifepoems.ptix.com and if you have any inquiries about the collection, please email poetryfestivalsg at gmail.com. Don't also forget to check out the poetry readings by our other poets at this YouTube link. Listening to our poets offers a different kind of experience from just reading it as on the page. So do listen to their work as they are meant to be heard. Just to reiterate, you can purchase copies of the book 
at this link. We would like to thank all our supporters and sponsors, including the National Arts Council, NPE, Art Residency, and RJ Paper. Thank you all for joining in today's session. With this, we have come to the end of our book launch. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you during our future Poetry Festival event. Thank you.